Today, it is well established that the dinosaurs were among the largest creatures to have ever roamed the Earth, and one of the biggest groups of dinosaurs to ever exist were the megatheropods. This group includes any theropod dinosaur that exceeded 3.3 tons in weight, while being over 9 meters or 29.5 feet long. And it was these megatheropods that were the largest terrestrial predators that the world has ever seen. But they weren't the only giant terrestrial carnivores that have shown up, as throughout Earth's history there have been a plethora of extremely large predators. Yet, only one can hold the title of being the largest non-dinosaur land predator ever, and paleontologists believe that it may have very well been the Fasolosuchus. This behemoth has recently garnered some much-deserved attention for its role in the 2023 movie 65, but despite many people just learning of it, it's actually been on paleontologists' radar for quite some time. It was described in 1981 by Jose Bonaparte after it was discovered in Argentina at the Los Colorados Formation of the Isquigualasto Villa Union Basin, located in the northwestern part of the country. The original specimen's remains were composed of a variety of different body parts, including sections of its skull, femur, radius, fibula, and vertebrae. Bonaparte quickly noticed the immense size of each of its bones and realized that he discovered a giant new animal. But he didn't yet understand the true scale of the Fasolosuchus. However, what he did understand was that the Fasolosuchus was clearly a member of an infamous group of archosaurs known as the Rauisuchians. This group involved any Triassic archosaur that was exceptionally large, predatorial, and quadrupedal with a pillar erect hip posture. This band of misfits dominated the Triassic, being the largest carnivores to exist during this time, and in the early 2010s, new size estimates of the Fasolosuchus put it at the top of the pack. Studies that reconstructed its partial skull and body remains found that it was even bigger than originally thought, with the skull alone being a whopping 1.3 meters or 4.3 feet long. Combined with the rest of its body, it's now believed the Fasolosuchus would have been between 8 meters or 26 feet, to 10 meters or 33 feet in length. At this size, the Fasolosuchus outsized all other Rauisuchians, and only one other came close to challenging it, the Sarasuchus, which may have been around 9 meters or 30 feet long. However, as of now, the remains of the Sarasuchus are too incomplete to make any good guesses on its true size, leading many to regard the Fasolosuchus as the king of this group. And being the largest Rauisuchian also means that for now the Fasolosuchus is the biggest non-dinosaur terrestrial carnivore ever discovered. The Fasolosuchus truly possessed an imposing stature, but it wasn't only long as it was also extremely hefty, with larger individuals weighing between 3 and 4 tons, making it as heavy as some of the largest known hippopotamuses. And while it wasn't as big as the mightiest of theropods, the Fasolosuchus still outclassed the average Mesozoic theropod and even outgrew some of the most well-known large theropods like Albertosaurus and Gorgosaurus. It was this immense size that made it virtually untouchable within its environment, contributing to its ability to become an apex predator. But it wasn't just size that helped it become a successful predator, as its powerfully built skull was equipped with a very deadly set of teeth, which were extensively long and sharp, being dagger-like in shape. It was thanks to these teeth and its robust jaws that the Fasolosuchus was able to become one of the first animals to specialize in taking down large dinosaurs, namely sauropods. Specifically, one genus of sauropod, the Lessimsaurus, is known to have coexisted alongside the Fasolosuchus. Due to the Fasolosuchus' size and its seemingly slow speed based upon biomechanics, paleontologists believe that it would have mainly hunted the Lessimsaurus as well as other sauropod morphs and larger animals in its habitat. Additionally, like many active hunters in the modern world, paleontologists believe that it also would have scavenged if given the opportunity, even if carrion wasn't its main source of food. But, because it wasn't the fastest around, it likely did not go after smaller, live prey. And some may think that the slower nature of the Fasolosuchus could have made it vulnerable. But, as the apex predator, there was very little for the Fasolosuchus to fear. In fact, paleontologists think that one noted difference between the Fasolosuchus and other Rauisuchians was a result of it simply being untargetable, as this difference was found in its armor. The vast majority of Rauisuchians possessed two or more rows of osteoderms that ran down their backs, offering protection against attacks to their spine and necks. However, the Fasolosuchus only had one row of these osteoderms, leading to the conjecture that it didn't have to worry about attacks from any other animal, and that the only conflict it faced was fights over mating rights and territory with other Fasolosuchus. That being said, the Fasolosuchus did have one adaptation in its spine that did somewhat make up for the lack of osteoderms, and this was a hyposphene hypantrum articulation, which essentially made its back extremely rigid. 
This granted an array of benefits, which along with an added degree of protection, provided structural support, body size support, and predatory advantages as a rigid spine aids in capturing and holding prey, while providing the necessary support to transfer force from the hindquarters to the jaws, facilitating powerful bites. This all added to the Vasolosuchus's many beneficial traits that made it the undisputed king of Triassic Argentina. And dated rocks suggest that its reign occurred between 220 to 213 million years ago during the Norian stage of the Triassic. South America during this time had often been interpreted as being an extremely hot and arid wasteland. Yet, in recent times, more detailed studies on the formation, where Fasolosuchus hails from, shows that it was a fluvial habitat that was for the most part humid, but still experienced occasional dry spells. These lands were rich in life back then, and many animals, unfortunately for them, coexisted with the Fasolosuchus, which alongside the previously mentioned Lessimsaurus, included the sauropod morphs Riojosaurus and Coloradosaurus, and the non-avian dinosaurs Powelvinator and Zupesaurus. Non-dinosaurs were also present in the form of Crocodilomorphs, Coloradosuchus, Pseudhesperosuchus, the Synapsids, Jackalaria, and Tessalodia, and two non-dinosaurian archosaurs, the Riojosuchus and Neoedosauroides. Besides the sauropod and sauropod morphs that lived alongside the Fasolosuchus, none other in its environment came close to its size, and it was by far the largest carnivore around, meaning that life was good for this Triassic king. Sadly, no rain can last forever, and it disappeared from fossil records some 213 million years ago, making it not only the biggest Rawisukian, but also one of the last to exist. It's thought that the climate changes the Triassic saw towards its end heavily contributed to the demise of the Fasolosuchus, as the world became a drier and hotter place, eventually bringing down the largest non-dinosaur terrestrial predator to ever live.